Hey guys, welcome to Rotor Riot, and today we're taking a look at the all new Fat Shark Dominator FPV goggle, which runs the new Avatar HD video system. Fat Shark first unveiled this goggle at our event, Rotor Riot Rampage, where they brought out a pre production unit running some beta firmware and let everyone at the event try it out, get a feel for how it works, what it looks like, and most importantly, get some feedback. And I've been lucky enough to get to test the system along the way. I tried all the new firmware updates and see just how far this system has come. And now today, we've got full production units in hand and we're gonna get to share the system with some of the other rotor rat pilots. So we've built up a three and a half inch skylight, which is gonna show how the system performs a little bit smaller of a drone. And we built up a couple five inch quads. So we've got my Skyliner and Bubby's Moxie. So we're gonna be taking it out. We're gonna be pushing the limits of the performance. We're gonna be comparing it to some of the other systems that are out there. We're gonna see how far we can fly this thing. And most importantly, we're gonna have a great time and seeing if it can keep up with everything we throw at it. We're gonna see if this is the new ultimate HD FPV system. your boy Vortex, we're gonna take a look at the new Dominator goggles from Fat Shark. Oh, tell you what, I'm gonna like uh, having less weight on my head again. That's kind of nice. Kind of missed that, didn't you? No more big cinder block goggles on her head. Should we jump straight to the power button or should we save it? It's got a, <laughs> it's got a power button, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You can turn it on and off. It's a big deal, so. Oh, should we look it up what else comes with it? It's not a lot. You get a cable, you get some little extra foam bits here. The little wedges, in case your foam faceplate is not quite the right distance. I know on some of the models, some people, if you have long eyelashes, I kind of do, drag your eyelashes on the lenses, which is, can be annoying. So you can add a little more wedge in there. Increase that distance away from your eyeball. The other cool thing I've been liking about the Fat Shark goggles is you get a little, a lot more actually flexibility in focusing them. DJI goggles just left and right with these, they also come in and out and now it's just internal. So like I was saying a second ago with the eyelash thing, it kind of helps with that. It's not bringing the whole thing closer to your face, it's inside of there. That's what the little spinny boys do. Plus two to minus six diopter. If you're not too blind, you should be able to get these to focus pretty well without your glasses. Over here on the side, you got your little navigation joystick. That's how you're gonna get through your menus. Click in is your to select and then to go back, that's gonna be that button there. Record for DVR right there. SD card in the old classic spot right between the eyes where it's always been. <laughs> so you might want to be careful when you take that out because it might just uh, might just do that. <laughs> Last little bit for control is your fan control, which if I understand this correctly, the fan's always running and this is just going to control how much of that is going to actually pump into the little face unit to defog the goggles. USB-C port here, which is going to enable you to do video out with these. Pretty cool, maybe we'll have to do some more content down the line showing you how easy it is to tap into these. I know it's a bit of an issue with DJI, it's not as easy to watch or spectate or export the video out, so that's cool. And you got your four antennas, these are RPSMA. Um, also, you might wanna go for left-hand polarized antennas because if you're gonna use this with the Walksnail Avatar system, which you are because that's what works with it. You're gonna wanna go ahead and get you some left-handed polarized antennas so that they match the ones that come with the transmitter and you get the most optimal range. So you're gonna need four of those guys. I mean, no antennas included, huh? That's kind no of a... Antennas. Hmm. antennas purchased separately. Antennas purchased separately, sorry guys. These are not cheap as it is. You wanna add four antennas on there, it's gonna get expensive. And you know, maybe you already have antennas that would work with this, so. So there will be a little uh, walk snail branded four piece kit for your uh, goggle antenna. So you can snag these up at the Rotoriot store. If you wanna go the most uh, minimal sleek look, 
You can rock it like that. If you're trying to go a little bit extra range, you'll be able to get some patch antennas to swap out for the front. The displays are high definition. 1080p OLED is what we're working with in here. People care about that. I just think, does it look good or not? I don't know. OLED is good, right? OLED's good. High contrast 1080p OLEDs. Should we talk about the fact they look like a shark? Is that cute? See the little shark fin? To me, it's a little, little too cutesy that it looks like a shark. Like I want to wear like the tactical, like cool guy. I'm more that kind of vibe, but much smaller on the head. I like that. Still a little bit, I feel like of light leak. At least they gave you an option to adjust for that because I could easily pull back the sides right out of the box to be able to tweak that. I pretty much did this myself with like duct tape and a piece of a t-shirt on my DJI goggles and pretty much did the same thing. And yeah, that did the trick. No light leak, only just a little bit right there. Gotta give them the props for that a little stupid piece of foam wedge. That's like kind of clutch actually. I feel about latency. I don't notice any. You're not, you've never been that picky though. Yeah, I know, really. Well, if you're not picky about latency, you wanna try the 1080, man? It gets sharper than this? Yeah, that's 720. So you can go up to 1080 and we can up your latency a little bit. On 720, you're usually gonna see about like 19 to 21 milliseconds of latency. That's not saying like 39, 31. 31. So like personally, I prefer the lower latency, but Bubby says he doesn't mind and you've never really seen to care yeah, too much. Let's see if I can go through a tire. If I can go through a tire, then I'm not that worried about it. Yeah. Oh, well, ah. it clipped a little bit, so maybe it's, maybe there's a little something there. Huh. What's yeah, up? it does pretty good. Like, I haven't seen it get blocky at all. I'm gonna try to go out behind this other building. I can't hear you anymore. It's gone. Be gone. Now it's stuttery, but not bad at all. It's like a little stuttery, but not blocky. All right, so if you want to use the new super sleek HD Fat Shark goggles, you're going to need to have a compatible video system. So right now, the only video system that works is the Wax Nail Avatar system. And we have two flavors. One is a nano camera and one is a full size camera. So let's go ahead and tear into the box and see what we get with it. All right, so on first looks, when we open up the package, we have our camera, our video transmitter, two antennas, and then we have a cable here which can be used to update the VTX, as well as pull video off of here because this has an onboard DVR, so there's no SD card, so you can go ahead and use this cable to get the footage off of here. So I think it's really cool that there's no SD card because I know that makes it a lot sleeker not having to have a port on there, but I think it's only seven gigabytes and with this high quality image, it's 1080p. It might fill up pretty fast, so maybe in the future we can see some some higher gigabyte updates in here. And then here we have our cable that will be connecting this VTX to the flight controller. So some quick specs about this. This does 700 milliwatts of output power and it has 720p and 1080p options. And personally, I've flown the 720p and the 1080 and they both look amazing. I was really blown away by the 1080p. The 1080p mode does have a little bit extra latency, but me personally, I am really not affected by latency. So I was able to fly it fine and I will probably be flying that for basically everything. Freestyle style, whatever it is. On the VTX, it looks like we have two connectors for the UFLs. We have one right here and one right here. And I actually really like that there is a clamp holding down the UFL connectors because this will allow it to not rip off and crashes. That's something that I really worry about with other UFL devices that I see, is that they'll, in a crash, the antenna will pull off and I'll break the UFL connector on here. But we have some nice screws that hold it down. So I really like this for durability. So the screws that are used to hold down the UFL are really small screwdrivers. Um, I've been working with a lot of micro stuff lately, so I think I have some of these sizes, but that is one thing you might wanna make sure you have is some really small Phillips head screwdrivers so that you can get your antennas on. Looks like we have some mounting holes here. I think this is 25.5 by 25.5, which is an interesting size that they chose. I think it's annoying, but I think it fits the size of this cr better. Like, you know when you see ESCs that are like huge, but have 20 by 20s? Like, I don't know why I don't trust those, but like this just feels, it just looks right. A plus for having the 25.5 by 25.5 size is that that, you know, it's a really small module, so it'll be easily adaptable to current micros that are out right now. Because I mean, either way, I already just use double-sided sticky tape and electrical tape to hold down my air units, so that's probably what I'm gonna be doing with this. One thing I did here, though, is that the heat sink is not like actually 
bolted down to the board, it's just kind of on there. So if you are gonna use the method of electrical tape and uh, double-sided sticky tape, make sure you like add some screws in here and tighten it down so that this unit is one and strong because you don't want the heatsink to fall off of the board then it'd be kind of useless. So I'm curious to see the HD Nano kit now. I wanna see the size comparison of the cameras. This looks something similar to the newer DJI cameras that they released. Looks pretty much exactly the same size. Get into the HD Nano kit. What's oh, so cute? Look at the little camera. Okay, so it looks right off the box. It looks like we have basically all the same stuff. VTX, camera, antennas, and the cable. But if we look at a side-by-side -side comparison, this camera, is significantly smaller, maybe like half the size of this, this full-size camera. So I'm happy to see that we do have options in cameras because I know different frames require different size cameras. So it's really nice that we have options for this. It also seems that the cable that comes in the Nano HD kit is shorter than the full-size cable. Looks like it's about 80 millimeters from the plug to the plug. And from plug to plug here, it looks like it's about 120 millimeters. So about a 40 millimeters difference. Personally, I think if you are using this nano camera, you probably are using it on a smaller drone. Like I know the Skylight, the, we have one set up for this. So I guess it is nice that they have a shorter cable so we don't have that all that excess cable. But I, I know personally I'll be using the full size camera just because it's what my frame fits and I wouldn't have to add any extra adapters. All right, so for the full size camera, you can see we have two screw holes per side. And I am a big fan of this because in it just really helps for durability. And when I'm crashing, you know, if I have one screw hole, I've seen a lot of times my camera angle will adjust um, during crashes, so I'm really happy to see on the full size that we have two camera holes. So I will definitely be taking advantage of that and using two camera screws per side, locking it in really good. And the width of this camera is 19 millimeters wide. Um, that's pretty much your standard DJI camera. So basically any camera that fits the old DJI cameras will fit this new wax nail camera. Now, if we move on to the Avatar Nano, this camera is a lot smaller, so they couldn't fit two screws, but they do have one screw per side right there. And if you just tighten it down enough, it should be good. I'm assuming you're flying a smaller quad, so there will be less weight and less momentum to actually change your camera angle, so. And this camera is 14 millimeters wide, so that's five millimeters smaller than the, the large camera. So basically the only difference between these two kits is the camera, it comes with the same antennas and the same cables and everything you'll need. The input voltage on this guy is six volts to 25.2 volts, so basically anywhere from a 2S battery to a 6S battery. I'm not sure how much over 25.2 volts you can go, so if you do overcharge to like 4.4 volts per cell, I'm not sure if that can handle it, so maybe I'd stick to keeping your battery voltage at you know, 4.20, which is the standard fully charged LiPo battery. So yeah, we also have a bind button on the back of the unit. I'm assuming that you would have your camera cable going out forward. That's how I run mine at least. So you'll have your bind button right back there. So you can bind to your Fat Shark Dominator HDs. So we have found the straightest, longest road in Florida. We've got miles and miles and miles of just straightitude here. Straight uh, and we've also got a big, big old shoulder, okay? Big wide shoulder. We're gonna do a little bit of a range test with this Fast Track HD system. So you're gonna so, fly? Yep, I'm gonna fly. I'm I'll stay with you and be on the phone with, with these Drew. guys. Yep, and they're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chase the car. I'm gonna be on the side of the road so I'm not over a street. So I'm gonna be chasing, there's like a little side green patch of grass that I'm just gonna be flying over the entire time. So it's gonna let us be in the car, chase the drone, so not only will we know where it goes down because we're gonna push it till it falls, um, but also we're gonna be able to maintain visual. You're gonna be there as a spotter anyway, so you yes. should have direct line of sight as well as some additional line of sight yes. from us in the car. We're not gonna be over the road, we're not going to lose line of sight of the quad. This is going to be safe yes. and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Skylights get like an insane amount of flight time, so I think we're going to run this. And we have crossfire on there. Yeah, so still got the crossfire, so we have a really good radio yeah. link. I'll turn up the crossfire transmitter up to 500 milliwatts, so okay. we'll have uh, all the range, lots of range on the control link. Okay. So this is kind of the standard antenna kit, which is just for omnis, but we do have we the patch antennas Let's in use there. the patches. I mean, yeah. let's, if, if you're going to do long range, you're going to use patches. So. These uh, omnis are going to be sold in packs of two. So you could buy two packs of two to have all four omnis, or you could just buy two of the omnis and then another kit that gets you the two patch antennas. Cool. I would probably get two sets of the omnis so you have four omnis and then also the patch kit because I, I like to run omnis all around for most freestyle scenarios if I'm going to be doing any flying that goes behind me. Yeah, but I like to have patch antennas in my bag. So when we see a long stretch of road, we can long just fly down it. I, I gotta know what's down there. So these are only four DB antennas, which isn't bad. I don't know what DB is, but. DB actually stands for distance boy. <laughs> <laughs> Take off, bring it to a hover. It's gonna be on the right shoulder. 
All right, and then we're going. I'm good to go. It's still great. Wow. It's just looking, looking really good. Yeah, it looks great. I am really impressed right now, actually. Looks, uh, looks really good. We are really far. Oh, it's, get, it's getting, it's getting, it's getting blocky. It's getting, getting a little bit blocky. Uh, I can, I can see now. We're, we're back. We're good. I don't know what happened, but we're good. Yep. This is amazing. Wow. I've never flown this far, low to the ground. This is incredible. Okay, it's getting blocky. Uh, we're good, still. We're good. We're good. I'm back. Yeah. Oh. Slow down a bit. Slow down. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. We got you. We got you. No problem. No problem. We got you. No worries. Okay, we're going to get the drone and I'll mark it on GPS and we'll meet you back at the takeoff point. Awesome. So don't move because you're our pin for the, for the other side. I will not move. I will stay in this exact position. Fill your spot. We're going to unplug her for safety. We retrieved the drone. No problem. Dropped a pin where it went down. Now we're on our way back to the pilot. We're going to mark his pin and see how far did we go. got to be precise here. How, where's your... Okay, here we go. <laughs> I am a satellite tower, or I am a thingy. I'm a pin on Google Maps. Mark location. It is reading in kilometers. It's saying 2.09 kilometers. How do, here, let me change the... 1.3 miles. 1.3. Okay. A little over a mile and a quarter. That was great. 1.3 miles, that's pretty far. Yeah, that is really far. That gets the job done for and most. Especially for most, I do think there, there are pilots that want to fly longer, there, and there are other systems that go longer. I mean, or really, you know, to get the most range, you'd want to be using a... 1.3 uh, or Yeah, 1.3 or a different type of system that's... Uh, better for long, for range. long range. I yeah. mean, this 5.8 is really good for high density information, like for getting HD link. That's pretty much what you're going to need. But a 5.8 frequency isn't going to be the best for actual distance. You want to go to a longer wavelength uh, for that. It was weird though. Like, like halfway through, I, I said I saw RX loss in the bottom. And I was like, so you went, you lost crossfire for a second. I lost crossfire for a second. It came back, and then, but the weird thing, video would go out and then come back, and then at the very end, it just went black screen. Like it was no warning. Like it looked great. And then I was like, oh, then I disarmed it. So, but you were getting warning that it was getting worse. Were you yeah. watching it all? Because there's a bar icon in the in the corner. Were you watching it all? Like what? I wasn't what it was watching saying? the bar. I was just looking at the blockiness of it. Mm, yeah. It's a good yeah. sign that you lost it and it came back though. Yeah. Because a lot of times with digital systems, as soon as you lose anything, that's a that's kind of game over. Yeah. Yeah. Like once it at least with DJI, once you actually break connection, it doesn't just pop right back. Yeah. So it, faster recovery. Yeah. Until the bitter end, and then it yeah. was just done. So. Oh. We're missing a... Solder you desoldered the connector. What? Look at this. How does that Or happen? Or maybe that happened in the crash. Oh no, the battery pulled... F look, the battery shifted yeah, forward because I didn't use a uh, Velcro or anything and we just ripped the pad off the ESC. That's insane. Um, Which is, that's why it went black all out. That's probably... Hold well, up, dude, did you... Did you fail safe crossfire or did you fail safe the video? Now I'm because the video was like good and then boom. Was I don't it, I don't did remember it go black feeling. when you hit the ground or did it go black when when black after I hit the ground. Dude, you might we might not even found the edge yet. You might have fail safe the control link and then went down and then when you hit the ground it, it ripped the battery. It's possible. That is very possible. All right, let's do it again. Okay. We got to do it again. Yeah. We got it. We got it. You know, any, any any real science test should, you know, you should do yeah. multiple results. Yeah. One thing we could do is I could just hold the drone out the window and drive. Do you want to try your super patches? Yeah. Let's try, let's try the super patches. Let's go up to some patches. The patches. Let's take the radio with me. Yes. <laughs> big, yeah, just, big brain. Big brain. <laughs> big brain. Yeah, so basically Drew is going to be holding the radio in the car right next to the drone. So it's no chances of it fail safing. Hmm. So we're really just testing the video system. For calling it not scientific, it kind of is because we're isolating it to yeah. just the thing we're testing. I'm kind of bored of the whole long range <laughs> me, thing. Me like, it really doesn't interest me, but I hope you guys are entertained by this. All right, baby, you ready for takeoff? <laughs> All right, you got video? Okay, we're cruising. Woo! You're going so fast, Bobby. You're going so fast. Woo! Knife edge. Yo, knife edge! Oh, look at yourself! Look at yourself! Look how good you look! Wow, that's amazing! <laughs> Strong, we're at four bar four bars. Okay, we're at three now. Two. Three. No, back up at three. Keep going. Oh, uh, 
We're good. We're still good. We're still good. Back up to three bars. Yeah. Okay. I got my thumb on the video transmitter. It's super cool. So I'm getting good airflow. Yeah, the video is crazy good right now. It looks okay. We're good. I will say every now and then I'm having some quick little flashes, but it's like besides that, it's very strong. So, okay, we're down to two. Uh, maybe slow down. Okay, I'm still on video. Good. Okay, you can call it gun. Oh wait. Uh. Okay, it just went out, just right now. I, it, 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 I hit black screen, yep. Black screen? All right, and we're calling it right here, 1.8 miles. Okay. okay. So not quite not quite two miles, but that's pretty dang good. Yeah, I'm impressed And with you that. could get even higher gain patch antennas. Oh, you can get two patch antennas. I, I think pretty happy with that. I am very happy with so that. So like practically with a setup out of our bag as we would have it, we're getting about 1.3 miles and a more scientific test limiting the variables and things like that got us about 1.8 miles so yeah, pretty happy with those results I think it's pretty good I want to walk you guys through the two interfaces that you'll be interacting with in the Dominator goggles. So I said two interfaces because you have one set of on-screen display elements and a menu system generated by the avatar system itself. And you have a second set of on-screen display elements and menu system generated by Betaflight and displayed via canvas mode in the avatar system. So I've got the goggles video output hooked up to a capture card so I can see everything on the computer screen and I can record it for you guys. And I've got a drone plugged in over there and I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the camera with a black t-shirt there just so that we can focus. So starting with everything that the avatar system is directly responsible with, in the lower corner you've got the input voltage of the video transmitter. This is really cool because if you are flying something that doesn't have a flight controller, you'll have an easy way to display the aircraft voltage. One little caveat with that is, as you're seeing here, I've got this video transmitter powered by a 10 volt regulator, so all you're gonna see is a constant 9.8 volts. It'd be really cool if they added the ability to switch between whether it shows the input voltage or the voltage read from the flight controller. It's not a huge deal because I can display the voltage in the beta flight on screen display, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later. But moving on one step to the right, we've got the voltage of the goggles. So that's the voltage of the battery that we've got powering our goggles. Next to that, we've got the current bit rate. And next to that, we've got a reported latency. So it's telling us that the time it takes from when something happens in front of the camera to when we see it on the screens of the goggles, it takes 21 milliseconds. Now next to that, you've got a dark area that shows messages from the system. So right now it's telling us to choose a channel because we are on the public channel, which you can see because in the lower right-hand corner, it's showing that we are on channel eight, which like I said, is the public channel. You're not meant to fly on that channel. It's just the default channel. You should always fly on channels one through seven. Now in the upper right hand corner, it's showing how much space is left on the SD card in the goggles and on the internal storage of the video transmitter. And that actually does it for the avatar on screen display. Everything else you're seeing is generated by Betaflight and we'll come back to that, but let's get into the avatar menu system. So I'm just gonna push in on the joystick and boom, that pulls up our menu system. Like I said, we are on channel eight, so let's go ahead and get on a proper channel, like channel one, boom. The next tab we have is the share tab. So this is like audience mode where you could tune in to someone else's flight. But unfortunately, it's not currently working. This is something I'd really like to see them get functioning, so hopefully they can add it really soon. Now the settings tab, this is where you can actually change all the settings of the system, like the transmission power, the resolution, the bit rate, the frame rate, and a couple other things. I do wanna note that if you switch the resolution to 1080p mode, you can only have standard frame rate. So make sure that if you do switch it back to 720p because you want the lowest possible latency, that you also set the frame rate to high. We got a couple sub menus like in camera here, we can change different color profiles and uh, sharpness settings and things like that. The default settings have been good for me, so I haven't really played with that too much. In display, we've got a couple things like zoom out. I think that's to shrink the display in case the field of view is too big for you in the goggles. Does it actually work? No, that's, that's not actually doing anything. See, there's just a couple features that they haven't finished yet. And it's really just gonna take the input of the community to tell them what are the most important things to them? What should they be prioritizing? Like the zoom out feature, 
probably not that important. But there are other things like the share functionality that I'd rather them work on first. In the record set submenu, we can set the recording settings. Uh, it's really cool, you can actually have the video transmitter record in 1080p even if you are displaying 720. So it's nice, you can always get that quality. And then last for settings, we've got a device submenu where you can just set like buzzer volume. Oh, ranging mode, that's an interesting thing. So if I turn that on here, see it adds an element where it's attempting to tell you how far away the goggles is from the transmitter. See, like if I move it, it's actually showing a number. It's not super accurate. I mean, it's, it's cool because it can give you more information about your signal strength, but when you've already got your bit rate and your latency and signal bars, I don't think it's all that necessary. So I usually leave that turned off. The last thing you can do in the avatar menu is play back your DVR. Now exiting out of that, we've got some other things to talk about. So the rest of the elements that you see on there in all their pixelated glory, that is generated by Betaflight. That's the Betaflight on-screen display. Uh, those of you guys that have been around since analog might be feeling a little nostalgia for seeing those pixelated numbers. It would be cool if Betaflight maybe added a new font that had higher resolution. But for now, I can live with it because I'm so psyched on the functionality. In Betaflight Configurator, you can turn on any element in the OSD tab and it will show up here. It is the full Betaflight on-screen display in a digital system. So this is a little bit different from like the DJI system, where in the Betaflight Configurator, you could set up the on-screen display but you couldn't necessarily use every element. Only some of them worked. And what was happening was DJI was actually rendering those elements. So it would only render the elements that DJI had coded support for. In this case, Betaflight has full control over the display, so they can show anything. You could even put stick overlays on here, which is really awesome. And most importantly, you've got the Betaflight menu system, and you actually navigate that using your radio. So if I center both sticks, and I move the yaw to the left and pitch up, boom, that pulls up a menu, and we have so much control in here. So if I go into profile, I can set the PIDs, I can set my rates, I can tune my filters. This makes tuning your drone so much easier because you have access to every setting, and as Betaflight adds new settings, they'll just show up here. You don't need to wait for the video transmitter to add support for that. You've got everything that Betaflight wants to provide you. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do with the Betaflight OSD menu, and it's really exciting to finally have access to it. Overall, I'm psyched about all of this. I think the avatar menu system is really sleek looking, and most of all, having the full Betaflight on-screen display is just awesome. I got some special goggles I set up just for you, Sean. Awesome. Hey, look at that. Oh, there we go. Yes. Just the way you like it with big giant patch antennas. Dude. You got it fresh and ready to go. Oh, Here's some yeah. props for you. Get that set Ooh. up. This is awesome. I really wanted to test this actually. I wanted to see how well these things penetrated. We just no, started kind awesome. of playing with the different antennas. So the default antenna that's kind of being promoted are these walk snail omnis. They've done really well for me in a lot of the places I've been testing, but once we came here to the bando and have been flying around all this metal and over into other building. We're really not standing in the best spot. Right, it's too hot to stand out walls. there. Bubby started having some bad stuttering back there, so he went to the True RC stubbies and got a lot better performance. Okay. I'm gonna see how the full patch antenna, I'm yeah. gonna see how the full patch antenna do. All right, I'm just gonna take it easy take and it test easy. the range to start with. Who wants to just go this front? First thing. How far can I go? Yes, yeah, I want to. That's what I want to do. I want to see the range, the penetration. That's as he's got his patch antennas pointing. Whoa. Okay. All right. All right. This, I'm surprised. I'm really. Su I am better than DJI. How is that possible? I'm facing the wrong direction. Oh my! I'm going farther than I was with DJI. <laughs> what? I was not expecting. I thought it would be worse. I gotta. I gotta be so patch honest. I no. I used the same antennas. How is that possible? Cause you got all the distance, boys. Oh my gosh. No, I'm not lying. I'm not just trying to be a fanboy. This is awesome. Why are you such a sellout, Sean? Why are you such a... Way off the... I'm going yeah, way farther than I was with DJI He's now. He's got his patch antennas pointed that way. Like, they're pointing the wrong way. Completely the wrong way. But I'm ready? going further. Let's blow your mind. Let's turn you this okay. way. How's that now? Mind blowing. <laughs> all right, let's see how far I can go. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm like... I'm in the next parking lot over. I'm... <laughs> Dude, I'm just now going along the street because I can't even go any farther left without. <laughs> That's so far. I'm going along the street. I'm just now starting to feel a little bit of uh, latency. You got that one wheel in case you fail safe? Because we. Wow. We no, could... I mean I'm going so far. Oh, there's a line there. No, I didn't fail safe, but I crashed because I'm an idiot. 
disarm. <laughs> I didn't crash because I fail safe, I crashed because I hit a power line. Yeah. But dude, I was way over there! So I went twice as far. When you was it a safe crash? Yeah, it's fine. It's in the Okay, crash. so you failed. I failed. And in a safe way. In a safe so way. So Sean fail safe. I fail safe. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably aren't gonna believe me when I say this, but I literally got twice the range and penetration that I get out of my DJI system. I literally put them side by side and flew them back to back and I was blown away with how far I could fly with this. Before it started pixelating, I never actually lost video completely, how much penetration I could get, and that's important for me because my favorite thing to fly is bandos. I like to fly where there's a lot of concrete and a lot of metal. Being able to fly around that stuff is usually a challenge because it interferes with the signal big time. The thing that made me love DJI was the fact that I could fly with confidence and knowing that I wasn't gonna lose my signal um, this gives me even more confidence. When Drew put this in my hands, he didn't give me any kind of expectation. So I immediately thought it was gonna be like it was at Rampage. I thought it was gonna be worse than DJI. I thought it was gonna have pixels in the screen and I was gonna have interference behind metal objects, but I was blown away, kind of in disbelief that it was better. I'm sold, I'm switching as soon as I can get it in my hands. There might be a couple of firmware issues right now, but so far they don't affect me. A couple of things to note about this that's a little bit different than DJI is the video transmitter. So the video transmitter has a few differences. One disadvantage to this is that it currently does not support an RC link. One of the things that I love about the DJI system is that I only have to have two antennas on the back of my drone. I don't have to have this additional crossfire antenna for my receiver. In its current state, it does not support the receiver functionality that the DJI system does. Per rumor that it might potentially support that feature in the future, but as of right now, I'm gonna have to add an additional antenna and an additional receiver with additional wiring and additional solder connections on the flight controller. And for some people that might be a deal breaker, me personally, I'm enjoying the radio that I'm using right now and I'm having a lot of fun with it. But I will have that dedicated Crossfire link that I like to use. Crossfire is very strong and I never have any fail or problems with it. It's a very good signal and I can rely on it. What is something you like and something you don't like about this new system? Um, something I like is the sharpness of the image quality. I got to fly back to back with DJI and just something about the way the camera is or maybe it's just 1080p it just looks a lot sharper and you know seeing a lot of like ghost things is a lot easier for me. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't like that maybe can be approved is the stock antennas are not the best so I had to swap out. Um, well they aren't technically stock antennas. They don't come with antennas. Oh it doesn't, it doesn't come with antennas. So you can pick yeah. Then I guess it's fine. Get, just just get better antennas. <laughs> just don't just don't use the ones they sell. Don't so this better. is my favorite setup. We have two Singularity stubbies, and then we have the uh, True RC X2 Air, and this setup worked great for me. I was able to fly really far. I think farther than DJI was because Sean did oh, yeah. a back to back test. There's Try even more room for improvement because we're still using walk snail antennas on the drone. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much potential. Yeah. If we once we start playing with this and seeing everybody else's experiences, I think we're gonna just be blown away with how much potential. Has. I mean, I'm already having a great time. So. Yeah, I like to see that Fat Shark is uh, presenting a nice HD system. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like the idea that it's solely in the hands of DJI. Even if it's only on par with DJI, I'm glad to see that Fat Shark is doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a big fan of DJI. They've been great to work with. I've really enjoyed their products. Um, but it's great to see another option. I got a lot of flack because a while back I was like, "Yeah, analog needs to die," and. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant by that, I wanted to see more HD options because yeah. for a long time, the real only option was DJI. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a great option, and there are times where I'll probably still continue to fly, but I'm so happy to see that there's another very viable HD option. I'm really enjoying flying this, and I will probably, for freestyle, be flying it as much as I can to keep getting experience with it, to keep ringing it out, finding out what I like, what I don't like. Competition sparks innovation. So, like, the more people that are invested in the HD system, the more competition there is and the faster it's going to improve. Maybe call it a negative that when one system's been out for two years now, mm -hmm. then the next one comes out, you would hope that it's like a whole leap ahead. And in my opinion, this is pretty on par. There is lower latency when you're in 720p okay. compared to DJI. So DJI, I'm usually seeing like, what am I getting, like 29, 31, 32 milliseconds. With this system, I'm seeing like 19 up to 21 milliseconds. So this does have lower latency. I think I can feel it. Maybe it's in my head because all y'all were like, ooh, you guys are Yeah, whatever. I'm glad that'll be a slight also, improvement. This is capable of 1080p. It is an improvement. Would I call it a leap? No, 
but right. I mean, we're already at HD. Like, I don't know it's how much that, more. Yeah, I feel right, it's yeah. that curve of like diminishing returns. Like, yeah. how much better can we get? I don't know. I feel like it was a huge leap. Yeah. I mean, in my experience, I got double the range, double the penetration. I can fly in 1080p mode. I didn't feel any additional latency. Mm -hmm. I got the wide screen without getting chops at the yeah, top. That is a nice um, I do like more image to look at because I do the yeah. 16 by 9. I love looking DJI at 16 by 9 and everybody tells me I'm doing it wrong because I'm looking at <laughs> right. less of an image. Like Whatever, I don't insane. care. I yeah, love the big version. It. I'm going to have a hard time finding something I don't like about it, honestly. If I had to pick one thing to complain about, I think I don't like the foam just because I've gotten used to the cushy DJI yeah. foam. I don't like the fact that there's no video, there's no receiver built into the, the VTX and I'm going to have to add my own receiver. Um, right now I'm thinking I kind of want to build two freestyle quads with this because I did find myself preferring the image quality over DJI. And once we got the whole antenna set up, I was just, this is, this is awesome, you know, flying 1080p. Um, I really loved it. So I'll definitely be building some more freestyle quads with it. The question is, do, do you have to go get this? Like, do you have to drop everything that you're currently using and go get this like right now? The answer to that question has always been no with everything that's ever yeah, came out. When right, DJI came right. out, we didn't say like, oh my God, you gotta go get it. It's If the gear that you have is working for you and you're able to do what you want, like that's great. If you wanna try something new, if you wanna make an upgrade, those are reasons to, to get into it. Like the most important thing about flying FPV is having a good time and your gear is only a small piece of that. Try new things, right? I, I When I'm into something, you know, I kind of go a lot. It wouldn't be that weird for me to have D the DJI system and the Fat Truck system and be flying both of them. Uh, because I have gotten to be involved with um, some of the testing and the development of both of those systems, uh, I will be flying both of them. And because this is the newer one, I'm going to be flying this as much as I can because I w really want to ring it out, try out all the features, find out where it shines, find out where it needs some work, and, mm -hmm. and, and keep helping it to develop. If you guys are pilots, let us know down below. Are you jumping on the Dominator hype train? Are you sticking with what you got? What are you most excited about? What would you like to see added to the Avatar system? Drop a comment down below. We're really excited about everything that's happening, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you've been thinking about getting into FPV or thinking about transitioning from analog to HD, maybe this is a good time to do it. Rotoriot.com, we got all the gear that you need. There's a subscribe button. Hit it because we're making drone videos all the time. Don't forget the bell. Don't forget the bell. And like Don't that forget. smash button. Smash that. <laughs> smash, smash that like button. I'm rusty at this. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Guys, I'm Ladrim. I'm Let's Fly RC. I'm Bubby FPV. And I'm Vortex. We'll see you next time on Rotoriot.